Hey everyone, it's Melissa Hurt of Integrative Studio here with another video to help you become clear, productive, and influential. In this video, I'm going to share with you a quick, short, gentle yoga practice to help you release some stress, relieve tension from the body and mind so you can sleep better. We're gonna start by laying on our backs. Lay on your back and feel through the bottoms of your feet where the edges of your mat are. And take this time, usually when we lie down, the body just has an impulse to just release. <sighs> so let that happen. Let that happen. Feel your breath moving into your belly. Let it rise and fall. And then let the legs go from one side to the other like windshield wipers, but they're moving in slow motion. So windshield wipers are a wonderful practice. They release the lower back. You're getting a little massage in the groin and there's lots of lymph nodes there that could use a little bit of that gentle massage pressure to help clear them out and make way for fresh lymph and blood. And windshield wipers is also a, a very gentle twist. And all twists are in some way detoxifying for the body. So I encourage you to keep the rhythm and tempo of your breath and sync with that of your legs. Maybe inhaling when the legs are on one side and as they move up and over, find your exhale. Let that exhale complete when they come over. Inhale. And then let the legs come up and over as you exhale, and then let it come to completion. So just, just do a couple more of these windshield wipers, just moving slowly and enjoying this massage of the glutes and the lower back. And now let's let the knees come back to center, bring your feet back in hip distance. And we're gonna bring the thighs towards the belly for apanasana, wind relieving pose. This is a nice massage for the intestines because we're hugging the thighs against the belly. If you are able to hold on to your shin bones, you can do that. You just want to keep your neck relaxed so the back of your skull is still on your mat. So if you feel like you're pulling the back of your neck, then hold on at the thighs or just get a small blanket to roll up and put under your head like a pillow. But this should still be a relaxing pose. We don't want any strain anywhere. We're just breathing into the belly. And from here, let's just roll tiny circles. Again, just massaging the lower back here. Good. And let's Take these little circles in another direction. Good, and then come back to center. And we're gonna add a little bit of a breath flow to this. So as we're gonna inhale, we're gonna let the arms come overhead, legs push up to the ceiling, inhale all the way, exhale. Squeeze the legs in. And then we'll do that again. Inhale, reach it up. Really stretch. Exhale. Do three more. And we're keeping the head on the ground the whole time. All right, now from here, let's roll over onto the side. We're gonna come up and we're gonna come onto all fours. So when we're on all fours, you wanna make sure that your hands are under your shoulders and that the wrist creases are parallel to the short side of your mat. So your hand, one hand isn't sticking out more or sticking in. If you're very intentional with your hands and place your knees under your hips. And we're gonna 
bring the lower belly in just a little bit. We're not sucking it in. All we're doing is moving the pelvis in alignment with the ribs. And that's gonna keep our core integrity. And then from here, we're just gonna push through the hands, round the back, let the tailbone point down to the knee hollows for cat pose. And then open that up, long in the breastbone, shoulders moving down the back ribs for cow. And let's do a few more of these little flows from cat to cow, still connecting with the breath all the time. And take time to linger. If you find a positioning that just feels really great, just hang out there for a little bit. Good. Now let's do another cow pose. And as we exhale into cat, we're going to push whoo, the hips back towards the heels, keep the hands where they are, and even walk them out further for extended child's pose. Just breathe here. Let the upper arms rest down as much as they can so the shoulders are getting a nice release. Good. Now let's come back to table. And from here, we're going to come to stand very easily. Just place your feet under your hips, place your hands on your shin bones, let your knees be soft, and just hang in a little rag doll. We're going to cross the arms across the elbows and just hang here and just very gently sway from side to side. Your hips will move, your ankles will move. We're just swaying to feel that lengthening of the spine. And then release the arms and we're just gonna slowly, ever so slowly, oof, roll up, <laughs> slowly. Let the arms hang by the sides, roll the shoulders back. And let's bring our hands together at the heart. We're going to do a half sun salutation. And we don't need yoga props for this practice. I'm gonna teach you how to do this. Um, if your hands can't touch the floor, I'll teach you how to modify using your own body parts. So we're gonna inhale the arms up, exhale, come to a forward bend by sliding your hands down your legs, and just going as far as you comfortably can, but let the head hang down. And then we're gonna inhale, bring the hands a little higher up, either just below the knees or just above the knees but push the shoulder blades down the back ribs. This is called flat back. We take a breath in here and we exhale back to that forward bend, wherever it is. And then we take a breath in as we slide the hands back up, hands come back to prayer, reaching up. And that's our first half sun salute. We're gonna do that two or three more times as a flow. So reaching up, exhaling forward bend, Inhaling flat back, exhaling forward bend, and then bringing the arms up, 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 tall mountain. Exhale, hands to the heart. Two more times, please. Inhaling up, exhale forward bend. Inhaling flat back, exhale forward bend. Inhale, bring the hands up the legs, reach it up and come back to the mountain. Let's do one more. Inhale up, exhale down. You're beginning to feel the flow of this. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. And then soften the knees, bring the hands back up. And then bring your hands to your heart. So now we've got the hips and the spine nice and warmed up. Let's go ahead and remove my ponytail. Let's go ahead and bring the hands on the hips. Keep the right foot forward, step the left foot back. And we're gonna set up for warrior one. 
So warrior one, we have the back foot at an angle so that the hips can still be mostly facing forward. The back thigh is rolling in, front thigh ideally is rolling out. And you do that by activating the heel into the mat, like there's a line in the middle of your mat and you're activating your heel towards that line. Now from here, I want you to keep your core strong. So you're gonna bend the front knee, but you're not moving your belly. Some people, when they bend the knee, they go forward by moving the chest, but that's just an optical illusion. Bend your knee, reach back through that back leg and keep your trunk nice and upright. And this is how we find the base for warrior one. So we're gonna stay here and just play with straightening and bending that front knee to ease this hip into the pose. Because this is a very big stretch if you've been sitting for a long time. So let's find a moment to ease into it. You can adjust your back foot however you need to. And then you're welcome to stay here with your hands on your hips, or you can bring your hands together and up, reaching up through warrior one. And you'll notice there's a little teensy back bend happening here because you're reaching your breastbone up and back as your heart shines open to what's ahead of you. Take a big breath in, release it out. And now keep the legs as they are, bring the arms down. We're gonna cross the hands behind. So bind the hands, like you're holding hands with yourself. Bring the shoulders down the ribs and we're gonna take it forward for humble warrior. So you're feeling more weight in that front leg. Keep your knee over the ankle. Don't let that knee roll in, folks. Press strongly through that front foot to come to stand up. Release your arms and step the feet back to mountain pose. Ground yourself with your breath. We're going to do now the other side. So standing now with the left leg forward, step back the right leg. Find your feet. I always say, find your feet. We build the pose up from there. So the back foot's at an angle so that back thigh can roll in. Front thigh is able to roll out, roll out because I'm activating that heel. And then as I bend that front knee, I'm really pushing back through the back leg to open the front of the hip. So we'll just ease into it again. Just ease into it because really the psoas muscle, which is the muscle in the front of the hip that you're feeling here, it's the muscle that's responsible for our ability to walk. It's a really unique, beautiful muscle. It connects from your breathing diaphragm all the way down the body and attaches to the front of the pelvis and goes all the way down to where the um, ball and socket joint is essentially. And when we sit, we typically don't have the best posture. Go ahead and keep the leg, the leg bent here. We don't have the best posture. And so this muscle gets shorter. And that's why when you stand up, you feel that little pinch. Cause it like, kind of like, kind of like a rubber band when it gets old, it loses its elasticity and it gets kind of small and crunchy. That's kind of what's happening to the psoas muscle. So when we lengthen it back, and warrior one, it's like we're lubricating it again to get the elasticity back, but you do need to ease into it. So let's bring the arms up if you're doing that option, or you can keep your hands on your hips. Let the chest stay nice and open. And just keep breathing here. Now we're gonna keep the legs as they are, bring the arms down, find the hands behind you, Open up that chest, bring the shoulders down, and then we bring the trunk forward for humble warrior. Feel the strength in your legs. Enjoy it, press up, release your arms, that hands on the hips, step the feet together. So now we're feeling some energy moving through the whole of the body, especially the legs and hips. 
We're gonna keep that up, keeping the right foot forward, step back again. Similar kind of stride that we had in warrior one, but we're not gonna bend the front knee as much at all. We're gonna do pyramid pose. So for pyramid pose, we wanna keep the feet like we were doing in warrior one. So the back foot is active, front heel is trying to swoop in to this imaginary line in the middle of my mat. I can do a little micro bend in this front knee. I don't wanna lock it, especially if you have knees that tend to hyperextend, don't lock it. But we're gonna hinge forward from the hips. Remember that flat back we did in the half sun salute? Same kind of feeling, keep your hands on your hips. We let your back muscles, which is the back line of your core support you here. And we're getting a really big stretch in the front, excuse me, in the back of the front leg. So just breathing here. Stretch the mat with your feet like you're trying to stretch Laffy Taffy. Keep your legs active, keep your pelvic floor active, and that's where you find your balance. Keep breathing. Now press through that front foot to bring the trunk back up. Step the feet together. Take a breath here in mountain pose, and we'll do that for the other side. So left foot stays forward, right foot comes back. Just take your time to find your base. Little micro bend air pillow behind the kneecap so they're not, that kneecap isn't locked and pushed back. But now we're gonna hip hinge, bring it forward. Keep that idea of the flat back. So it's like the shoulder blades are sliding down the back ribs. Your back muscles are supporting you here. Stretch the mat with your feet and just breathe. Good, and then press up through that foot. Step the feet together. Excellent. Okay, so now we're gonna come back to sit. We're gonna sit in Sukhasana, which means easy pose. Also known as crisscross applesauce, possibly from your preschool days, but it's a little different for yoga because in Sukhasana, we actually don't wanna see the ankles. So you wanna be a little more tidy with your feet. So, you might have been sitting like this in the past, but you can see your feet and ankles, tuck them in so that they're nice and underneath and tidy underneath your knees. And in this way, we have a lot more integrity in the knees and the hips. If you feel like this is too much pressure for your knees, then you wanna take a, a bath towel and roll it up and wedge one under each thigh and it'll be like a yoga block or a yoga bolster or a blanket. But if you feel totally fine here, just stay with me here. We're gonna inhale the arms up, reach it up and then out to the sides and then just walk the hands forward. And here we are getting back into the hips. So again, if you've been sitting a long time, we're still releasing the sophisticated system of muscles, but oh, it's gonna feel so good tonight when you go to bed. And just breathe here. You wanna take time when you're in these poses so that your muscles have a chance to catch up with what your mind's intention is and actually release, which is another reason why it's so important to be intentional in your practice. Let your mind be with you. Don't go through these movements and be thinking about your grocery list because then you will risk getting injured because you're not being mindful of what you're doing. So stay right here, right now. Okay, let's walk the hands to one direction. Doesn't matter which one, but just keep this little side bend action that's happening. And then walk the hands to the other side. Just enjoy a little side bend here as you reach more one hand perhaps. Breathing here. And then bring the hands back to center. Bring the spine back up. 
And let's do a proper side bend, reaching up and over, walk the hand out to the side and really yawn the ribs up towards the ceiling. Keep some intention through your fingertips. So it's not a dead hand, right? We're always intentional, bringing cellular awareness to everything we do. And then reach that arm up, 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 up. Take it over, little shimmy of the shoulders and let's come to the other side. Walk the hand out, reach the hand up and over. And just breathe here. And then bring that hand up and over. Just roll the shoulders forward and back. Now let's roll the shoulders back. Place the hands behind you and get a nice little back bend here. Looking up towards the ceiling. And now let that go. And we're just going to find an easy twist. So bring the hands out to the sides. Twist to one direction, place one hand on the thigh, one hand behind you. And you don't wanna crank yourself into a twist. Your hands are here as a contact point for balance. I could still hold the twist without my hands being here, but I'm just here to kind of feel a sense of stability, emotionally, physically. This is how physical contact works. We get oxytocin, even when we're just touching ourselves. And so when we're doing a yoga practice where we're moving in all these different directions, having these little contact points is great. Helps you feel safe and grounded as you practice and move. All right, let's bring the hands up, release that twist, take a breath in and out, and then we'll go to the other side. And then bring the hands up, come back to center. And then let's just find some easy cat cow like movements with the spine. And lastly, I invite you to close your eyes or just find a soft gaze. Or if you would like to lie down for Shavasana, our final rest, you may do that as well. We're gonna close with a short meditation. Just feeling the breath move through the body. And in this practice, we created a lot of space because we released the shoulders, the chest, the back, the sides, the hips. And every part that we released is connected with how we breathe. And so let's take a breath in together. Side out through the mouth. And we'll do that again. This time, breathe out through the nose. And just come to a natural breathing rhythm, feeling that movement of breath in the body. And this feeling of just breathing, just bringing your mind to the movement of breath and coming to an awareness of your body and the periphery of your body, your mass, just how your body feels in space. This is a practice that you can do before going to sleep at night. And it will help you come into a meditative state so your brain can begin to ease into sleep. So let's bring our hands together at our heart and give thanks for your yoga practice today. Thanks for taking such good care of yourself and mind, body, and spirit. Thank you. And that is your gentle yoga practice. I hope that this released your back got your hips moving again to free you up from sitting in a chair for long periods of time. And I hope that you have a wonderful sleep tonight.
Be sure to like this video, leave a comment below on how this felt for you, and be certain to subscribe to this channel to be the first in line to get my videos on how to become clear, productive, and influential. Thank you.